If you spend too much money on live services, you might be a whale. But what does that mean? Let's chat about it in the comments below. But first, my opinion, I'm Tarmac, and this is Feature Creep. When post-launch DLC started, it was largely laughed off by the greater game community with Bethesda's horse armor causing the brunt of the stifled or open snickering. It expanded into an obviously much wider range over the 15 years since horse armor first released. We've got everything from genuine microtransactions of a dollar or less up to thousands of dollars for these lovely digital goods. And during the time where it actually met the definition of the word microtransaction, it was relatively easy to excuse, and we mostly had the complete game versus non-complete game argument. Ultimately, that battle was lost because of the boiling of the frog, a topic I've got on the burner for another video soon. What started to happen in the time since I've been covering the game industry is that we've seen a sort of weaponization of different groups of gamers against each other. Whether this was an active, coordinated effort or merely a coincidental one that the game industry had no desire to squash is debatable, but that different groups of gamers became hostile to one another is certainly fact at this point. Where it comes to live services, the current buzzword, or DLC, microtransactions, post-launch content, or whatever else you want to call them, the industry itself internally had to figure out a way to categorize players and payers. And being the creative powerhouse the video game industry is, they decided to copy Las Vegas terminology. In Vegas, for those not in the know, there are a group of employees that work for the resorts who are called casino hosts. What they do is they track your gambling and give guests who gamble more than others certain perks while they're in town on vacation. This is true for other casinos and gambling meccas, but let's not pretend Vegas isn't the king of that castle. These perks could be free food, front of line access, free rooms and such. At the high end, you have players who gamble so much that a casino host will literally send a private jet to pick you up and bring you to the city. I'm not claiming this from being one myself, but I have met a few. What do they call those people? They call them whales. The term whale won't be new to you in video games. It's commonly used to describe exactly what it does in casinos, someone who spends a metric ton of money on a single game. At least that's what the common definition is. You'll often see the word trotted out to describe those people who are still starkly behind the development of Star Citizen, buying thousand dollar ships that don't exist in the game yet. Or you'll see it used to describe the stay-at-home wealthy person who doesn't want to wait for a timer in a mobile game, or who likes to gamble away what to them is just a pittance, but to the rest of us could be a mortgage payment. Or, more cynically, you'll have it described as someone with a gambling problem or mental illness who has been psychologically tricked into buying too much by the evil game company. Given how popular loot boxes were and how much the industry likes to say it's not gambling, I think it's a bit on the nose for game developers and publishers to describe their customers with co-opted Vegas gambler terms. And let's not kid ourselves, these people obviously do exist. While I won't claim it's a strict peer-reviewed study, in my research I did come across a study from Datablog Earnest, which strongly suggested that for people who make more than $90,000 a year in earnings, game purchases began to fall quite a bit implying that those who make more money play fewer video games, which to an extent makes sense, as those who make more money have more options for their leisure time, and in many cases also less leisure time. The part of all of this that is unfortunate though, is that video game news media and gamers online consistently point to whales as being the bread and butter of digital revenue, and they seem to be using their own preconceived notions of what a whale is when making that claim. In fact, even some game developers have made the same claims, that it's the whales who bring in the big bucks. But it kind of matters who you call a whale, doesn't it? And I promise you folks, the bar isn't nearly as high as you think it is. Some developers, like Congregate, though they don't like calling them whales, would rank the top spenders from 2014 at about $500 lifetime spending. Back in 2013, Facebook defined whales as gamers who only spend $25 a month. Delta DNA, data analytics firm, used a whale benchmark in 2016 as those who have spent more than $100 total on in-app purchases. That could be a single $100 transaction, or if someone played for a year and spent a grand total of $9 a month, they would be considered a whale. Do you see how the term whale is rather quickly losing its value? Now, to use the Facebook $25 per month number, I know that to some people spending $25 a month on games is a lot. That's $300 a year, less than a new console though. 
It is worth considering and understanding that in many hobbies, and I dare say I suspect most hobbies, this would actually be considered low. I'm not trying to demean folks that don't have a lot of scratch, I've been there. But remember that the average gamer age, according to the ESA, is 38 years old. And statistically, the older you get, the more money you have simply due to time. $25 per month is not a lot of money. In the US, for example, in 2016, crafting consumers on average spent $60 a month on their hobby. To go just a small step further, according to game research firm Superdata from 2019, millennials are spending an average of $112 a month on gaming content. Some of that is buying full-priced games, some DLC, some to their favorite Twitch streamer. So if you can spend a quarter of the average millennial monthly gaming budget and still be considered a whale, it certainly isn't a distant group of rich folks after all. Meanwhile, a Las Vegas whale is the kind of person who has a million dollar credit line or more with the casino for a weekend trip. In Vegas, spending $25 in a month wouldn't even get a casino host to say good morning. I really don't think that the video game industry taking the term whale was accidental. All of this blathering on about numbers is fun and all, but the real crux of what I'm trying to point out here is that when the industry says whale, it doesn't mean people dropping thousands of dollars in one shot like a lot of gamers assume. The bar for being a whale is so low that gamers are inserting their own belief of what a whale should be into the argument. Because logically, sure, a whale should be someone spending a ton of money. The term whale doesn't do us as gamers any good. It's been a divisive one that is trotted out in online debates as a way to distance people from being a part of the quote unquote problem. We don't have to worry about loot boxes because it's the whales keeping those games alive. Whales spend thousands of dollars on individual games, so it's not me validating the game industry adding in silly monetization. Where the truth of the matter is that at this stage, the current classification of what a whale is will be even lower than some of the stats I've mentioned. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if companies started considering gamers who spent any amount of money, at least monthly, to be whales. The reason this is a problem is because it's a sleight of hand. The game industry continues to encroach upon gamers' wallets, with just a smidge more abuse every year than the last. All the while being told by the game companies that you don't need to worry about these monetization schemes because it's just the whales keeping the game afloat. What they leave unsaid is how low the bar for being a part of the whale category is. We can all blame the whales for having post-launch, high price low-value purchases in damn near every game that exists now, because it's not my $20 or your $25 that matter to developers. Even though it turns out that many of us have been whales the whole time. How do you think that gamers should combat the continued creeping of post-launch monetization? Are you a whale, or do you think that I'm totally off base here? Thanks for watching. My name's Tarmac, and that's all I have to say.